Joshua, this is my review of Where the Wild Things Are. This one I have reviewed in time for you to see it in theaters, and god damn it, I want you to go and see it right now. I don't care if you look at the commercials and trailers and say, that looks totally hipster. If you do, you're a douchebag, by the way, because being hipster isn't necessarily a bad thing. And Or you look at the commercials and you think to yourself, oh, but that's a kid's movie. This is actually not a kid's movie, and that is a very surprising thing. Actually, I really love the way they've adapted this. This is adapted in a way that a parent would look back at a children's story and think of all the further implications. It's really interesting, because it maintains the spirit of the original Where the Wild Things Are. Yes, the, like, what, 30-page picture book? But you know what I mean. It's got that kind of jovial vibe to it. And at the same time, it introduces this whole much more mature inflection on it, where everything is psychologically created by Max in this world. Everything that you can look at. As well, all the characters... Not everything is as happy as it first appears to be, just like real life. And that is largely the moral of the story. And if you go into the movie expecting this kind of movie that I'm talking about, then you will love it, if you that you like what I'm saying at least. And even if you don't like that, you know what, go, go give this movie your money anyway, because I think it's a fantastic movie. This is going to be on my top, uh, top movies of the year. It's one of those, it's one of those, fa or those all ages films I think really works. For kids can go and enjoy it. They might be a little bored and a little confused at parts, I think. But I think they would still be quite entertained. And, like I said, if you go to this alone, don't feel like you'll be embarrassed. I went with a bunch of people, but I could easily go to this by myself and not feel embarrassed. Because it was just a fantastic movie. Max, the main character, played by the actor Max Records, first role, ironically, for same name. Does a really good job here. He's actually a really great actor. Uh, especially all the voices do quite well. James Gandolfini as Carol, the main monster, does a particularly great job. They're really the two main characters. The only other one other than that would be Lauren Ambrose as KW. And, uh, the other main female monster. The movie is really fascinating. It's really hard to talk about the plot. I can't really say much without spoiling it because there isn't really a ton of plot. It's largely just character development, having fun, and just talking. And that sounds really boring, but it's really not. The movie is fascinating a lot of the time. It's really, really funny more often than not. And it really enthralls you, the visuals of it. This isn't really a, a tour de force, per se, but what they have managed to create is really wonderful. Shot on location, God knows where. None of it is really CG at all, except for the monster's faces. And that includes the that does not include the monster's bodies, and the monster's bodies are giant animatronic puppets, and that is really awesome because it really gives this a natural feeling to them, and yet you still get the emotional expressions available to us right now with using the CG for their faces. It really brings some life into the monsters. All the voice actors do a great job. All the monsters are really memorable. Um, I particularly like the bull. Very funny. <laughs> reminds me kind of an Eeyore type character and like I said there's not a huge lot to say the, like just go back going back to the locations it's a kind of a stark fantasy world but it's definitely fantasy world it takes place in kind of decrepit forests deserts kind of rocky plains it's not jo it's not incredibly joyous and I think it really contrasts with the fact that the movie has a general very uh a real color palette but uh, I'm not sure what to say about this movie oh 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 there's one thing I definitely need to mention the music of course done by Karen O and the kids which is basically just means there's kids co as a chorus a background sometimes uh, the score is mostly fantastic I would not listen to it on its own I think but in the pur for the purposes of the movie it worked really well when it needed to communicate that kind of happy, wild rumpus time like the movie does near this nearer the beginning, it really worked, and it was a lot of fun, and there was really big charge out of it. But when it needs to be that kind of downbeat, introspective, reflecting moment, and you need that kind of mood music in the background, it was great at that too. 
she wisely chooses to cut out the kids from a lot, a lot of the depressing parts. <laughs> but uh, it really worked. This fantastic soundtrack. I know a lot of people I know that have seen this movie have actually picked up the soundtrack to listen to on their own. Not my taste to listen to normally, but in the context of the movie, it worked really well. All this said, I don't know what to go on out or else about the movie about. It's kind of a difficult movie to explain, and that is why I enjoy it. Because if you go with anyone else that has a somewhat of an appreciation for film, then this is going to be a great movie. Because you can walk out of it, and you'll both think whether you hated it or you loved it, and this is quite a binary opposition movie, and to create binary oppositions between people, that is, then this is going to be a lot of fun to discuss. There's a lot to discuss. And frankly, like I said, just go see this movie. It needs the money. It made a lot of money, but it did cost a lot of money, too. Somewhere upwards of $100 million. I'm really not sure how they're going to make that back. And at the moment, it's only got about 70 uh, domestically. I do not have the international numbers. But I do want to make more money because I want more of these types of movies to be made.